Hi, this is a um, spiritual political broadcast by the Chikri Yoga Party and here we are today I'm explaining to you what we do in Chikri Yoga and what it's all about. First of all the word Chi comes from the oriental word for energy, the highest energy or Ki or in yoga they call it Prana. The word Kri is a root Sanskrit verb which gives you the word Karma, the word Kriya and it means action and yoga as those of you that know about yoga will know means union uh, soul and spirit union so chi kri yoga means using your highest energy for whatever action to create unification between your soul and the greater spirit so what do we do in a chi kri yoga class let me tell you i believe a lot in the mind and in the soul and i believe that everyone that comes to yoga if they do not leave the class having gained some type of connection with their soul or blended their mind into the soul or even gone further and connected their soul into spirit somehow they haven't come to a yoga class they've gone to a pilates class or a stretching class or an aerobic class or something where they don't teach a definite spiritual angle of connecting your soul with the greater being now that's no disrespect to any other forms but I know for a fact that yoga was specifically designed for spiritual union so it's my job to make sure that if you come to my classes that you get definite spiritual contact during the class even more important than the asanas the exercises of pranayama or the philosophy that I'll give you is that you come away feeling I have practiced union I have practiced yoga this is what is important now when you come to these classes not only will you get that spiritual aspect through teachings of meditation and very deep pratyahara relaxation techniques avasan but you'll also get physical work so the way that chikri yoga works is i like to build from the core first many many yoga asanas need strength in the abdomen in the diaphragm in the lower back and in the middle back so my work is based around this area i'll strengthen people in this area with many many small individual exercises that will give them what's known as core strength in the common terminology but really it's just middle body power um, in qigong also they use a lot of this middle body strength as a real force of the body so you'll do lots of abdomen exercises and lots of lower back and middle back exercises to make it very powerful then we work a lot on the upper body so you get a lot of tone in the arms and great power in the legs the legs we work a lot on simply because they are the roots of the body you see if you have weak legs then you're less connected to the earth so you're less able to dynamically pound your way through this world and you'll you'll be less connected to your force and your greatest strength at the muladhara chakra the base chakra so we like the legs to be powerful if your legs are very firm on the ground no one's going to push you over you'll be able to stand like a warrior stand amongst the crash of breaking worlds as yogananda says and remain unshaken so we do great strength of work in the legs we work a lot on the digestive system as well doing twisting movements which will massage all the organs the inner organs so make your your liver your colon your stomach pancreas and spleen very very active and strong we do a lot of balancing exercises a lot of balancing exercises and a lot of balancing exercises on the hands like crow and mayurasana and headstands and handstands are coming this year as well now what i like to do more than that is to try to build your stamina and to build your cardiovascular and your heart function as well so i've combined many of the yoga asanas into individual sequences very very new original sequences like warrior sequence tree sequence my own version of the sun salutation um, bridge sequences and newer sequences that are coming up now which will test your ability to keep going work with your breath and create flows in your movements I believe that it's not really the asanas these days that are going to give you your greatest fitness or your greatest health it's going to be what you do in between them how you connect them and many great yoga teachers out there at the moment work in a similar fashion so you'll learn that but it's not that simple I come from a music background as many of you know my mother was an Indian dance teacher and uh, child prodigy she used to do dancing from from since I was a kid all I've ever seen is dancing in the house so music has been a big part of me so what you're going to do is you're going to take all these yoga asanas all your sequences and you're going to put them on beats just like you're choreographing a dance but not that hectic more more well coordinated and you're going to combine everything so your level of coordination your precision your timing your mental 
strength and accuracy will also improve in these classes and I think it's more fun doing it to music. We use music which is original Chikri yoga music um, with beats obviously or we use R&B and hip hop tracks which I like, we'll play them, synchronize them and work with them and also just ad-libbed movements will also be done to music a lot of the time. Not all the time though as you can understand. We begin the class with philosophy always. Five minutes of discussion about yogic terms, yogic sciences so you all have an understanding and I don't let anybody leave the class without memorizing the things that you've learned in the class so week to week you remember things that need to be done. The classes are very disciplined but they're also very relaxed. I like people to have fun. I like people to enjoy themselves, but I don't want people to come there and play or talk to the friends around them and giggle and laugh. It doesn't, it doesn't happen in these classes. You'll be separated or removed from the class. You must work 100% with 100% attention. I don't want your money unless you're gonna give me your attention. You spend attention on me and I'll spend your money on me. <laughs> so we work with a lot of concentration.